Our first reading is from the first chapter of Malachi. The oracle of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, says the Lord, but you say, how have you loved us? Is not Esau Jacob's brother, declares the Lord. Yet I have loved Jacob, but Esau I have hated. I have laid waste his hill country and left his heritage to jackals of the desert. If Edom says, we are shattered, but we will rebuild the ruins, the Lord of hosts says, they may build, but I will tear down, and they will be called the wicked country and the people with whom the Lord is angry forever. Your own eyes shall see this, and you shall say, great is the Lord beyond the border of Israel. A son honors his father, and a servant his master. If then I am a father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my fear? Says the Lord of hosts to you, O priests, who despise my name. But you say, how have we despised your name? By offering polluted food upon my altar. But you say, how have we polluted you? By saying that the Lord's table may be despised when you offer blind animals and sacrifice. Is that not evil? And when you offer those that are lame or sick, is that not evil? Present that to your governor. Will he accept you or show you favor? Says the Lord of hosts. And now entreat the favor of God that he may be gracious to us. With such a gift from your hand, will he show favor to any of you? says the Lord of hosts. Oh, that there were one among you who would shut the doors, that you might not kindle fire on my altar in vain. I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, and I will not accept an offering from your hand. For from the rising of the sun to its setting, my name will be great among the nations. And in every place, incense will be offered to my name, and a pure offering. For my name will be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. But you profane it when you say that the Lord's table is polluted and its fruit, that is, its food, may be despised. But you say, what a weariness this is, and you snort at it, says the Lord of hosts. You bring what has been taken by violence or is lame or sick, and this you bring as your offering. Shall I accept that from your hand, says the Lord? Cursed be the cheat who has a male in his flock and vows it, and yet sacrifices to the Lord what is blemished. For I am a great king, says the Lord of hosts, and my name will be feared among the nations." This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the third chapter of Matthew. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Now John wore a garment of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. 
His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our recitation of the sacrament of the holy baptism. What is baptism? Baptism is not just plain water, but it is the water in God's command and combined with God's word. Which is that word of God? Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew. <coughs> and of the Holy Spirit. In our Old Testament reading from Malachi this evening, we ran across a bunch of priests at the temple who were offering poor sacrifices to God. As you, you know, they were to offer different types of sacrifices, mostly of animals. When it came to the animal sacrifices, though, they were to be the cream of the crop, the best of the best. So if you had uh, 20, 20 lambs, let's just say, you would pick the lamb that had no blemishes, that had no bruises, that had no cuts, that was the most beautiful, had no injuries, had no deformities, the closest thing you could come to as far as perfection goes in that little lamb. You gave your best, you gave your beefiest one, your strongest one. That's one you sacrificed to God. And that's not what was happening. The people lacked faith in God. They didn't trust that God would work through what God said he'd work through with sacrifices. So they thought to themselves, I'm going to take my best sheep and take it up to the temple and sacrifice it. My strongest one with the most meat, the one that could probably reproduce more, and I, I'm just going to sacrifice that to God and get nothing from it? <laughs> I'll take this one that broke its leg last week. It's going to die anyways. I'll just take that up to God. That's what they were doing. Not just the people, but the priests. They lacked faith. They lacked faith that God would provide what they needed, that God would receive these offerings well. It's like Cain and Abel all over again. When we run into our, our New Testament reading, we see something else similar happening again with the Pharisees and Sadducees, the, the priestly class of the Jews. As John's baptizing all the people, the people are coming and they're bringing right offerings. They're coming in repentance. They're recognizing their sins and, and that they have nothing, that they can only have faith in God to save them, that in and of themselves, they're nothing. That's what they had to offer. And it was a beautiful offering to God. What did the Pharisees and the Sadducees bring? Did they bring a perfect offering of repentance? No. Nothing. They came sneering at John, wondering what he was doing. That's what they brought to God. Not, not repentance, not a beautiful fruit like that, not the best of what, what they could bring. No, they brought their sneering, their, their mocking of John, all of that. What can sinful man offer God? Whether it's the laity or the priestly class, what? can we truly offer to God who has all things? What are we going to give that can actually impress him? Nothing. 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 And that's
that's the key to all this. God himself said in Malachi, when he was talking to these priests who brought the worst, who did not act in faith, God said this, I have no pleasure in you, says the Lord of hosts, and I will not accept an offering from your hand. For from the rising of the sun to its setting, my name will be great among the nations. And in every place, incense will be offered to my name and a pure offering. A pure offering. A perfect offering. A holy offering. A perfect lamb pure lamb, a holy lamb that God will provide. When John the Baptist came, it's not recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, but the other Gospels record it. Do you remember what he said when he saw Jesus coming? He announced it to all the people. He said, behold, look, there's the Lamb of God who takes away the sin." of the world. There he is, Jesus. That pure offering. Not made by man, made by God. Through the flesh of the perfect God-man, Jesus Christ. We also see here at the end of Matthew that when Jesus is baptized, he says... This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. And God the Father was pleased with the sacrifice that Jesus Christ was about to bring into this world, the purest of offering that God spoke about in Malachi himself, that pure offering, that perfect offering that Jesus was going to offer it. It's the same offering that we celebrate tonight in the Lord's Supper, the very same, the very same body and blood of Christ shed 2,000 years ago all the way over there in Jerusalem is going to come here to you tonight so that you might have faith in the works of God to save you. We're not saved by our efforts or how hard we try. God's not even impressed. We're saved by having faith in Christ who does save us. We don't offer to God the successes. I know sometimes we feel good if we're fighting or battling against a sin and we have a success. Hey, we didn't fall into that sin once or twice. Well, good. Feel good about that. That's good. But don't think that that is what is going to appease God. He's not impressed. His son didn't commit a single sin, did he? Not one. That's a perfect sacrifice, a perfect offering. So we have faith not in our successes. We have faith in Christ, the pure Lamb of God. And some people will try and beat themselves up over their sins as if by their many tears they would impress God or by somehow punishing themselves or thinking, I am being punished. This will make up for my sins. No, it won't. It just means you'll have a lot of tears and you'll just be punishing yourself. God's not impressed with that at all. There was one who was punished for sins, right? One. His son. The perfect offering. One. Punished. Him. Not you. The punishment has already been paid. And that's why we have faith. Not in the sufferings we go through in this life to get us off the hook with God. We have faith in Christ. Knowing that through his punishments, yes, we are forgiven of our sins. I pray for all of us. We would have that that sight that, that John the Baptist had. That when we look at Jesus, we would always, always remember. And, and rally and, and be so happy beyond measure that we could look at Jesus and say, there is the Lamb of God who takes away all my sin, all of it, from my 
conception all the way to my death. He's covered all of it, and he's done it perfectly. Amen. And now may the peace of our God, which surpasses our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Please stand as our worship continues with the prayers. <laughs>